These shots need to get in everybody's arm as rapidly as possible, or we're going to be back in a situation in the fall that we don't yearn for. That Nursing's been my life. Like, that's, that's what I am. That's who I am. I love it. Um, but this COVID-19 stuff has really shown me a different level. Um, it's discouraging. It really is. And like I've said before, my freedom comes first, my beliefs. So if worse comes to worse, um, I, I am strongly against this vaccine. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. Um, I, I already talked to my husband and I am at that point where if it comes down to that, me losing my job and um, I can't find another job that won't let me work without the COVID vaccine, then I am ready to give up nursing. I had people in my own party saying, gee whiz, I don't know if that's very smart of Dr. Jensen to do, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to stop being political and just do the right thing. Honestly, it gives me no pleasure to say this, but we do have kids suffering from myocarditis and we've had some deaths. And whatever we're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. And you know what else? It's not just myocarditis, it's pericarditis, the sac around the heart. This thing is blooming and exploding. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So good to see you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, quieten our minds, still our hearts, for your living ways are all we seek, God. Strengthen our lives, inspire our spirits, and in your living waters flow endless grace. Amen. A virus that mainly affects cows and cowpox was used in the first scientific demonstration that giving a person a virus could protect against a related, more dangerous virus. Since the COVID-19 vaccine requirements are becoming mandatory, we need to, to know the truth. My friends, Christ Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, John 8, 32. So if your employer tells you that the vaccine is mandatory, what are you going to do? If they tell you that you'll be terminated unless you get the vaccine, what are you going to do? Are you just going to do whatever they tell you? Are you going to obey them? Family, is that what God tells us to do? We should obey the government no matter what. Acts 5.29 Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. See, I will not obey men and women, or the government, over God Almighty. It's not going to happen. I will not obey a manager, the director, the congressman, the governor, the president, over God. I understand that right now, I will not obey men over God. Never, never, never. Yeah, I'll let these false preachers obey man over God. Go ahead, see what happens to you. And, and family, let me tell you something right now. False preachers are leaving the way for the so-called Christians. They're telling people things like, oh yes, the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. I recommend that you get the vaccine because I researched it and it's good. There's nothing wrong with the COVID-19 vaccine. You should all take it. Do these false preachers have any backing at all from God Almighty? Did they even study the Bible and, and use their brain at all? And let me give you the answer. No, they don't. Peter and John were not going to hearken the voice of any man over God himself. Genesis 3.17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. See, did you see what happened to Adam? He hearkened to the voice of his wife instead of God's voice. Same thing with the COVID-19 vaccine. Are you going to hearken to the voice of your employer? Yes, the vaccine is mandatory. You will be terminated. Oh, okay, yes, I will get the vaccine, whatever you say, master. The so-called authorities now believe they can tell you what to put in your body. 
Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and hearken unto their voice instead of the voice that thunders. When God speaks, his voice is thunder. And you will do what he says. But not the voice of men. I will not choose to obey men rather than God. 1 Samuel 15, 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. And thy words, because I fear the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn with me again, that I may worship the Lord. See, King Saul, King Saul knew that he had messed up bad. He sinned against God by obeying the voice of the people. He feared the people and, and obeyed their voice over God. What will people think of me if I turn down the vaccine? What will my manager think of me when I tell him or her no to the vaccine? They're going to think I'm an idiot because they have made the vaccine out to be the best thing ever. Oh no, what am I going to do? People are going to think bad of me. Well, the Bible says that woe unto you when all people think good of you. But, but notice that Saul asked for forgiveness right there. He says, he says, pardon my sin and turn again with me. Please, I want my sin to be forgiven so I may worship the Lord. Again, what was Saul's sin? He feared the people instead of God. He obeyed their voice versus God's voice. Folks, that was a sin. Saul rejected the word of the Lord, so God rejected him from being king over Israel. Family, we'll get the truth today from the Bible about vaccines. And then you can make your own decision, make your own choice. You can be like Saul and reject the word of the Lord. Or you can hearken unto God's voice and trust him. But I might lose my job. I might get canceled by Twitter. But I might lose my home. But my family might not want me around because I'll carry COVID-19 to them. But I fear my family. I fear my friends. I fear my manager. I fear my employer. I'm scared of everything. Galatians 1.10 for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I'm not here to please the men and women of this world. I don't live my life to please them. My life wasn't given to me so I could just do whatever people want and be popular with them. Do you seek to please men? Is that why God gave you the life you have right now? If you're looking to please men and women, you are not a servant of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2.4 But as we were allowed of God to put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. God is the one who will try your hearts. God is the judge. Men and women aren't. Who cares if they think bad of you? Who are you going to hearken to? Who is running your life? Is, is it the people of this world? Is it the smart scientist? Are they your savior with their vaccines? Is your pastor the authority in your life? Is your priest the authority? Is your pope the authority? Mark 7, 7 through 9. How be it in vain do they worship me? teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that we may keep your own tradition. My great Catholic Pope said the vaccine is okay. So it must be okay. Whatever he says is good because he never does anything wrong. He, he's my savior. Let me warn you today. Don't reject the commandment of God so you may keep your tradition. So I'm going to ask you, have you made a tradition of obeying the world over God Almighty himself? Is that your tradition? Guys, if so, you need to establish a new tradition based on God's word. You should actually trust God over man. Revelations 14, 8. 
And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Are you going to fornicate against God and trust everyone else but God? Are you going to drink all of these lies that the world is giving you? Oh yes, I accept everything they tell me. False preachers will misuse one verse in Romans chapter 13 and tell you to do whatever the authorities tell you to do. Well, let's see what happens when you do that. Revelation 14, 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cups of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Family, the authorities will tell you that you must take the mark of the beast or you won't have food, you won't have a job, you won't have any water to drink, you won't be able to purchase anything. I know. But if I lose my job, if I don't take the COVID-19 vaccine, listen, I'm not saying, I am not saying the COVID-19 vaccine is the mark of the beast because it's not. But I will tell you this, without question, it is on the same order of things. Sure, we, we've been chipping our pets for years. Location, vaccines, um, medical records, all in that chip. Surely a chip is okay for us. We love our pets. Look again, it's not the mark of the beast, but it's on the same order of things. But my employer said, I must get the vaccine or I'll end up killing people by spreading this awful disease. Trust us and just take the vaccine. Fine. Take the vaccine. Fine. Take the mark of the beast in the future. Be tormented in hell forever. See, the people who are actually hearing the word of God won't be dumb enough to take that mark. They will be watching. They will be waiting they will understand when that mark is coming. The Antichrist will be the authority in this world. Keep worshiping the worldly authorities. Keep on. Not once does he say that. Not once does God say to trust men and women of this world, not in the entire Bible, not one time. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 2, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. False preachers, false teachers will use that verse to say you must do whatever the authorities tell you to do. All power and authority comes from God Almighty. Does that mean God puts all of these evil people into power? Did God put the Pope into power of his false church? Do you think God wanted that? No. Does God put the Antichrist into power and tell you to do whatever he says? No. Read what verse 2 says again. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. My friends, do you think God means to just do whatever they say and sin against him? Well, the Antichrist told me to bow down and worship the image and you say to do whatever they say. Is that what God really means? Really? Are, are we dumb enough to believe that God would tell us to sin? Just do whatever the authorities tell you to do because whatever they say is coming from God? Is that the truth? No. Family, that's the opposite. Be subject to the higher powers. Jesus didn't put the earthly authority above God's authority ever. Not once. He didn't break God's law. If a law from the government breaks God's law, you follow God's law. Always. See, Daniel didn't break the law when they made a law saying he couldn't pray to God. He did it anyway. Yeah, that's how he ended up in the lion's den. 
You're going to bow down to my image, which I have made, or you're going to die. You're going to take this COVID-19 vaccine, or we're going to terminate you. You're going to take this mark of the beast, or we're going to starve you to death. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 through 18. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Do all the false preachers forget this from the book of Daniel? Yes, probably they do. They don't read the Old Testament. They don't read the Bible. But they act like they do. They're too busy writing and producing books to sell you so you read their books instead of the Bible. We will not do what you say, King. We will not worship this image. And our God, our God can save us. We're not sure if he will, but we know he can. And folks, if he chooses not to, we will still not bow down to the image. And I know people will say, but Stephen, it's just a vaccine. Just a vaccine that's here to help you. It's not going to hurt anything. But it's just bowing down to an image. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not a big deal. These false preachers are confusing everyone so much. Yes, we, we must get the vaccine. Why is that, Pastor? Well, because Romans 13 says we must be subject unto the higher powers. All of the higher powers are ordained of God, so we must do what they say. Hey, doofus! False preacher. There is no higher power than God. You can't do wrong against God and then act like you're being subject to the higher powers. Psalm 2, verse 2 through 4. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers to take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Well, that doesn't make sense. The higher powers on earth are doing what God says. That's what false preachers are saying. We need to trust God. The higher powers on earth. Do you guys hear this? Where do they get this stuff at? And do they read the Bible at all? The kings and the rulers on earth set themselves against the Lord. They set themselves against Jesus Christ. They set themselves against his true Christians. But guess what? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Psalm 83, verse 1 through 3. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and not be still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and that they hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. So the kings took counsel against Daniel, but they're ordained of God. He's given them all power. See, we must do everything they say. Hey, listen, any preacher that tells you that is a false preacher. And you need to get away from them. Understand that right now. They are Satan's little minions setting up people to take the mark of the beast. That's it. They took counsel against Jesus Christ. But we should support the rulers of the world. Listen to this. Acts chapter 4, verse 26 through 28. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod, Pontius Pilate, and the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. So what happened to Daniel? Did God not help Daniel because he didn't follow the law? Did God not tell Daniel that he should have followed the law and ignored his law? God says to pray without ceasing, but the government says you cannot pray. What did Daniel do? Let's look. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, 
He went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God, as he did after time. Daniel went and prayed. He didn't care what their law said. The evil leaders are persuading the so-called Christian leaders to take the vaccine. Hey, it's loving if we take the vaccine because it protects others, and we love everyone. We're Christians. They don't understand that love is following God's commandments. Daniel 6.16 Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thy service continually, he will deliver thee. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And with the signet of his lords, that a purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. See, according to the false preachers, Daniel did wrong because he broke the law and he was being executed. They'll tell you today, no matter what, you should be subject to the higher powers on this earth. Well, Daniel should not follow that. So, so God should have been angry with Daniel, right? Wrong. Daniel broke their new law because that law didn't align with God's law. Daniel 6.18 then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went into haste unto the den of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried in a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocence was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. It doesn't hurt anyone when I don't get the vaccine. It didn't hurt anyone for Daniel to pray to God. See, Daniel trusted God. Throw me in the lion's den. If God wants to save me, he will. If not, I'm going to heaven. When I reject the COVID-19 vaccine, I'm not hurting anyone. It's my body. But they'll tell you that you're going to kill someone by carrying the COVID-19 virus. Because they tell you that their vaccine is going to save everyone. But is that the truth? No. Is that what the flu shot vaccine does for everyone? Does it save everyone? It sure doesn't. In reality, it's not helping anything. It's making everything worse. And how do I know that? Because vaccines go against God's word. And when that happens, nothing good comes out of it. So let me say this again. Nothing good comes from the COVID-19 vaccine. Nothing. Are the scientists and doctors saving you? Are the doctors and scientists saving you? Do they even know what they're doing? No, they don't. But I do know that God knows what he's doing. He made you. Family, he did not require a vaccine for you to live. Does God ever mention anything about trusting doctors over him? Does God ever say anything remotely close to that thought in the entire Bible? No, he doesn't. Second Chronicles 16. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceedingly great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fourteenth year of his reign. My friends, the Bible teaches us the opposite. God wants us to seek him first. The great false preachers and the so-called Christian churches they sure say to seek the physicians, get vaccinated. You need the COVID-19 vaccine so you can come back to church and bring your offering. If I'm not sick, why do I need a vaccine? Why do I need a physician if I'm not sick? Matthew 9, verse 12. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I don't need a vaccine to prevent some sickness that I don't have, folks. People get the flu vaccine all the time and still get the flu. People will and are 
getting the COVID vaccine and still getting COVID. I've had the flu shot once in my life, uh, recovering from heart surgery. And I didn't even know I was getting it, to be honest with you. And I only remember having the flu once in my life. And that's because an employee of mine who knew he had the flu came to work anyway. Now, now he should have stayed home because he was sick. I'm not sick. I don't need to stay home. You see, I don't need to wear a mask if I'm not sick. I don't need a physician. Matthew 5, verse 25 through 27. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had had and nothing was bettered but rather grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Family of the physicians cannot heal everything. They don't know how to cure COVID-19. They put together some vaccines and want to be seen as heroes. They are the saviors of the world. The world doesn't need a vaccine to save their body. They need Jesus Christ to save their soul. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. But get this, in this woman touching the clothing of Jesus Christ, didn't, that didn't save her. It didn't heal her. See, that's not what it was. Mark chapter 5, verse 33 through 34. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Family, the Bible is very simple. The entire Bible is about trusting in God alone and nothing else. Trust the physicians and the vaccines and see how far that gets you. If you trust in those things over God, you don't understand who God actually is. He is God. Everyone just throws around the name of God like it's nothing. No, he is, he is God Almighty. He can end any disease at any time that he wants. But how is that going to happen? It happens through faith alone. Trust in God and he'll take care of you. The false preachers are filled with their worldly wisdom and everyone listens to them for some reason. They'll teach you that the Bible is just too complicated to learn on your own. You need them. And they'll teach you to obey the government in all things and take that COVID-19 vaccine. But I want you to watch how complicated this next scripture is. And they can't understand it. They're blinded. Psalm 118.8. And remember, this is complicated. Bear with me. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's it. You can put your trust in COVID-19 vaccine, and I will put my trust in the Lord. We'll see who comes out better in the end. The false preachers, which are leading the vast majority of churches today, don't base anything they say on the Word of God. They could care less. It has no place in their life. They don't understand it. Well, why is that, Pastor? John 8, 37. I know that. Ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. John 8, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. John 8, 46 through 47. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. See, they cannot hear God's words about trusting in Him over everything, over everything else because they are not of God. Psalm 62, 8 through 9. Trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Salah. Salah. That word is used more than twice as much as amen and hallelujah. Some 74 times, and yet we as Christians don't necessarily know the meaning of Salah. And, and I think the reason that we don't necessarily talk about it very much is because the meaning of it in English is a bit obscure. It's first used in Psalms of David, uh, Psalm 3. David is actually running from his son Absalom, who is trying to kill him. 
And can you even imagine what that would be like? The first time it's used, David actually says in verse 1, O Lord, how my adversaries have increased many are rising up against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no deliverance for him in God. And then David utters that word, Salah. See, the word Salah means to reflect or to pause. And if you look at the context of how this word is used in the book of Psalms, it makes total sense. So what David is doing in that moment when he utters that word, so what is David doing in that moment? He's pausing. See, that, that's what it's usually translated to in English, but that's only part of what he's doing. He's pausing so that he can evaluate, that he can weigh the situation and decide what holds more weight in his mind. Can you not hear any of these words? Trust in God at all times. God does not say, oh, put your trust in the COVID-19 vaccine because it will save you. But the false preachers are saying to do these things. Now, Jeremiah 17, 5 through 7, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Keep on trusting in all these lies in the world, because folks, the vaccine, they say it'll save us all, but I'm telling you, it's not going to save you, it's going to kill you. Micah 7, 7, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, and my God will hear me. When I need help, God will hear me because I trust in Him. I'm not trusting in anything else, folks. We're not going to listen to these men and women of the Christian churches who have zero faith. These men and women uh, preaching to get the vaccine have no faith in God's Word. They fall right in line with all the worldly men and women of this world who, who could care less what God says. The Word of God has no place in them at all. I'm sorry, it doesn't. They don't care what God says. Their God are the doctors, the scientists, the drug companies, the government. It's anything else and everything else other than God Almighty. Have you ever stopped and actually thought about what's going into your body? Why, why aren't we thinking about these things? You want me to inject something into my body. What is it? Don't you want to know what it is before you trust in the men and the women in this world. And we just do what the world tells us to do. We should be saying, hey, wait a minute. What do you want me to put into my body? And this isn't your body. Well, why are you telling me what to put in my body? Why are you telling me my children must be vaccinated? Who are you? So here we go. So let's see exactly what God's word says about vaccines. I know, well, it's not wrong to be vaccinated. You've been preaching about not violating God's law, but I don't see how God's law is violated by getting a vaccine. So, okay, let's look at some scripture that goes against vaccines completely. God wants us to be clean. He doesn't even want us touching dead things at all. Leviticus 11.39 And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. Numbers 19.16 And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. Guess what? Vaccines have dead things within them. And do you think God wants us injecting dead things into our bodies? Pastor, what do you mean there are dead things in this vaccine? publichealth.org. These vaccines, the specific virus or bacteria is killed with heat or chemicals, and its dead cells are introduced into the body. Even though the pathogen is dead, the immune system can still learn from its antigens how to fight the live versions of it in the future. Vaccines have sickness within them, folks. You're injecting viruses into your body. That's evil. As God doesn't want us around sickness, and you want me to inject it into my body? We're here to stay away from the sick and the sickness. 
Uh, we don't quarantine perfectly healthy people. We don't make them all wear a mask. They aren't sick. But then you want to inject perfectly healthy people with an illness. Does this world make any sense at all? You're making things worse. Why? Because you're going against the Word of God in everything that you're doing. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Family, I have the Holy Ghost of God living within me. I don't need some vaccine to help me. I definitely don't want to defy my body with dead things, sickness, heavy metals, and aborted things. God hates all those things. And you want me to trust your word and go against God's word? Really, I mean, who is teaching this is okay for Christians? The so-called Christian leaders are saying it. That's who. Yes, I said aborted tissue. Abortion is murder. From conception, the baby is alive. Abort the baby at any time, and it is murder. And the false preachers jump up and say, there isn't any aborted tissue in the COVID-19 vaccine. So let's read a little bit more about what the medical experts say about the COVID-19 vaccine. No, the COVID-19 vaccines do not contain any aborted fetal cells. However, Pfizer and Moderna did perform confirmation tests to ensure vaccines work using fetal cell lines. And Johnson & Johnson uses fetal cell lines in vaccine development, confirmation, and production. Oh yes, it must be okay then to use fetal cell lines that came from an aborted baby. But those fetal cells aren't the actual aborted baby. They were just grown from the aborted baby. Okay, I see now. You're right. Let's all get the COVID-19 vaccine, says the ignorant false preacher. There's no aborted tissue in the vaccines. See, they just use tissue that grew from the aborted baby after years and years to get a good vaccine into us. So look, congregation, I've done the research. We're all good to go with the vaccine. You can trust me. Fetal cell lines are cells that grow in a laboratory. They descend from cells taken from elective abortions in the 1970s and 1980s. Those individual cells from the 1970s and 1980s have since multiplied into many new cells over the past four or five decades, creating fetal cell lines. The current fetal cell lines are thousands of generations removed from the original fetal tissue. They do not contain any tissue from a fetus. There. Is that better? See, fetal cell lines are just taken from elective abortions in the 70s and 80s. So those murders of innocent babies happened a long time ago. It's Pastor Stephen, it's okay, right? Vaccine makers may use these fetal cell lines in any of the following stages of vaccine development. Identifying what works, making sure it works, and manufacturing the formula that works. See, we're good, guys. Let's all sign up for the COVID-19 vaccine so the world can be saved. When it comes to the COVID-19 vaccines currently approved for emergency use, neither the Pfizer nor Moderna vaccines use fetal cell lines during the development or production phases. So no fetal cell lines were used to manufacture the vaccine. And they were not inside the injection you received from your doctor. Hallelujah. However, both companies use the fetal cell line HEK293 in the confirmation phase to ensure all vaccines work. All HEK293 cells are descended from tissue taken from a 1973 elective abortion that took place in the Netherlands. You'll see, just come from a dead baby in the Netherlands in 1973. That's a long way off from here. That was a long time ago. We don't have anything to be worried about. Guys, do you see how stupid, how stupid these people think Christians are? The real Christians who trust God's word aren't so stupid. We, we trust in God, not in man. Your words that we've all been reading, they, they don't deceive me. God never comes from evil. Good things don't come from evil things. Good things don't come from abortion. Good things don't come from murder. Do you understand that? Good things, family, comes from following God's word. 
killing babies and using them for vaccines is not good. And nothing good will come from them. Nothing good ever will come from them. And sure, you can look it up yourself if you can find it anymore. Vaccines have hurt people all over this world. People swear that vaccines lead to autism. Vaccines have led to many bad things. I know 100% for sure that they don't lead to good things. And how do I know that? Again, because everything about them goes against God's word. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a bit different. It's an adenovirus vector vaccine. Adenovirus is the virus that causes the common cold. The virus in this vaccine has been changed so that it does not cause illness. Do you see, vaccines include viruses, and they think making your body take on a virus is going to help when the stronger virus comes along. If you think going against God's word is going to help you, you're wrong. My friends, stay away from dead things. Stay away from sickness. So with this type of vaccine, a carrier, in this case, adenovirus, acts as a delivery vehicle. The adenovirus has the coronavirus spike protein added to its DNA. The adenovirus carries that genetic material into your body, delivering its modified DNA to your cells. Your cells will then make the spike protein activating your immune system. Once activated, your immune system creates antibodies that fight off the spike protein. Yes, of course, we need new genetic material injected into our bodies. Nothing could go wrong. To make the virus vector vaccine, Johnson & Johnson infects PERC6 fetal cell lines with adenovirus. All PERC6 cells used to manufacture the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are descended from tissue taken from a 1985 elective abortion that also took place in the Netherlands. I'm sorry, this, 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 this angers me. They, they use the cell line because it's a well-studied industry standard for safe and reliable production of viral vector vaccines. I know. Oh, it was just an elective abortion from 1985 from the Netherlands. Those babies weren't important, Stephen. Here's a summary from the medical community. Get ready for this. None of the COVID-19 vaccines in development use fetal cells taken from recent abortions. They haven't used any fetal cells from recent abortions, so it's okay. And on the same guidance, we get this great information too. Are you ready? The Vatican has issued clear guidance that permits Roman Catholics in good faith to receive COVID-19 vaccines that use fetal cell lines in development or production. You heard that right. The Vatican's doctrinal office said that it's morally acceptable to receive COVID-19 vaccines using cell lines originating from aborted fetuses when alternative vaccines are not made available. Well, yeah, if there's nothing else we can do, then of course we can take vaccines with cell lines originating from dead babies. Duh. Everyone knows that. We wouldn't actually want to put our trust in God first for once, would we? That's just dumb. So let's head to the conclusion here. Let's make something perfectly clear. God doesn't want you to get the vaccine. God doesn't want you to put your trust in anything other than him. And if you do, watch out. And for all the leaders out there who want to force people to take a vaccine and threaten them over it, God will take care of you. Don't ever tell me what I'm putting in my body. You understand that? You have to kill me before you vaccinate me. You aren't my God. You aren't my authority. God is my authority. He's the highest and the most powerful authority that I will follow. So you better hope when you come after me that God doesn't show up that day and take you out first. John chapter 11, verse 26, And whosoever liveth believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So you can come after me over the COVID-19 vaccine. You can come after me over the mark of the beast. You can kill my body, but I will never die. Why? Because I believe in and on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hey, guess what, guys? That's me. 
I will fight you to the end over the vaccine. I will not go against God Almighty. You can. See what happens. I'm going to seek God and trust Him. I will make my supplication or request to God. When I need help, I will go to God. God will be my help. And do you think I'm scared to get COVID-19? No, I have not one ounce of fear of COVID-19 within me. If I get it, I get it. I'll get over it. I'll beat it. Why? Because God is my help. And if I don't heal, I'll be with God. Psalm 91, 1 through 3. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Surely God will deliver he who trusts in the Lord from this sickness and disease. My friends, if you aren't trusting in the Lord, you should be scared. But I'm not. So don't bring your fear to me and want me to get the vaccine because you are scared. I'm not scared. Read the word of God and trust in his words. And you won't be scared anymore. Psalm 91, 4 through 6, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. As God is my witness, right here and right now, I am not scared of COVID-19. I am not scared of you people who want to force people into taking the vaccine. Psalm 91, verse 7 through 9. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. You will fall when you don't trust in the Lord. Trust that vaccine. It won't turn out good. Instead, forget about the vaccine and put your trust in God Almighty. So do you believe he can save you or not? I believe what he says right there. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. With one thought, God can end you or God can protect you. What do you want? Do you really want to trust in these politicians, these so-called scientists and doctors who hate God? I'm not. I'm going to put all of my trust, all of it in God Almighty and never look back. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works and that my soul knoweth right well. See, God already made my body to fight off sickness and disease. I don't need a human trying to make it better. God already made us to fight off these diseases. Maybe the reason the disease is here is because we haven't put our trust in God. So listen up. COVID-19 vaccine pushers don't tell me what I'm going to put in my body. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about me. You need to turn to God Almighty. He's there in heaven watching you. You, You'll pay for everything you're doing. We don't get by with anything. You, You can't hide from God. Stop pushing the vaccines and start pushing God to people. 2 Corinthians 6.16 And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And see, God is my God. You're, you're, you people aren't my God. You false preachers aren't my God. I'm sick of you false preachers. I'm sick of you. You better know that. God is sick of you. And you better watch out false preachers. Malachi 2, 3, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread your dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. God is coming for you. He's coming for you all. You better start running now. You're going to have dung on your face. That COVID-19 vaccine is dung. 
And that, that's what I think about it. It's not going to save you, but God can. That's the truth. So, so I hope you have your answer to the question for this sermon. The title of this sermon is Trust Them and Just Take the Vaccine. The answer is no. And just in case you haven't drawn that conclusion yet, no vaccine. Trust in God and He will save you. Are you so scared that you won't trust in God? Well, don't do that. God can save you from anything at any time. I had a 13% chance of survival two years ago laying on a hospital bed. And my Lord Almighty, He spoke. He said, Stephen, I got great plans for you. I love your kids more than you do, and I got you. Here I am. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you that, that you are the God of the impossible. You can do anything. Lord, I want to trust in your ability and not my own. Father God, teach me to see the difficulties in my own life from your perspective and help me to focus on you and your power. I want to be like Joshua and Caleb who believed in a good report and focused on you even in hard circumstances. Father God, my responsibility is to carefully read, trust, and obey your word. And today I bring before you this difficulty in our lives. Help us not to fear, but to trust, to trust you in this situation. Now, I declare my faith in your ability to fulfill your promises to me. You will fight for me and win the battles in my life. You are mighty, powerful, righteous, and true. I have nothing to fear with you on my side. I will be strong and courageous even in hard times. I will not be terrified or discouraged, for the Lord my God will be with me wherever I go. Lord God, Father God, you already know the best plan for my life. I will not try any man-made method to do only what you can do. Father God, show me your supernatural power. Teach me how to walk by faith and pray breakthrough prayers. And Father God, just as you said in Joshua 1.3, you will give me the land in every place where my feet step. Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. Father God, I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. The message to you too. This is not about the vaccine. It's not about whether the vaccine works. It's about who we as Christians put our faith in. And um, guys, that's all I have for today. If you wish to make a donation, uh, please do. You can find a P.O. box in the description below as well as a PayPal uh, link. And until next time, be safe. God bless you and your families. Thank you.